day was bright and sunny as most May days tend to be in the hills of Appalachia, down in Knoxville, Tennessee. A dozen men put on their suits and quickly took their places in white robes and those tall and pointed hoods that hid their faces. Their feet fell down in rhythm as they started their parade. They raised their fists into the air. They bellowed and they brayed. They loved to stir the people up. They loved when they were taunted. They didn't mind the anger. It's exactly what they wanted. And as they came around the corner, sure enough, the people roared. But they couldn't quite believe their ears. It seemed to be support. Had Knoxville finally seen the light where people coming round, the men thought for a moment that they'd found their kind of town. But then they turned their eyes to where the cheering had its source. As one, their shoulders crumpled when they saw the mighty force. The crowd had painted faces, and some had tacky clothes. Their hair and hats outrageous, each had a bright red nose. The clowns had come in numbers to enjoy the grand parade, and they laughed and danced that other clowns had come to town that day. And then the marchers shouted, and the clowns all strained to hear, each one tuned in intently with a hand cupped to an ear. White power, screamed the marchers, and they raised their fisted hands. The clowns leaned in and listened, like they couldn't understand, and then one held up his finger and helped all the others see the point of all this yelling, and they joined right in with glee. White flower, the clowns shouted, and they reached inside their clothes. They pulled out bags and tore them, and huge clouds of powder rose. They poured it on each other, and they threw it in the air. It got all over baggy clothes and multicolored hair. Now all but just a few of them were joining in the jokes. You could almost see the marchers turning red beneath white cloaks. They wanted to look scary. They wanted to look tough. One rushed right at the clowns in rage and was hauled away in cuffs. But the others chanted louder, marching on around the bend. The clowns all marched on too, of course, supporting their new friends. White power, came the marchers' cry. They were not amused. The clowns grew still and thoughtful. Well, perhaps they'd been confused. They huddled and consulted this bright and silly crowd. They listened quite intently. Then one said, I've got it now. White flowers, screamed the happy clown, and all the rest joined in. The air was filled with flowers, and they laughed and danced again. Everyone loves flowers, and white's a pretty sort. I can't think of a better cause for people to support. Green flower stems went flying, like small arrows from bad archers, and white petals covered everything, including the mad marchers. And then a very tall clown called the others to attention. He choked down all his chuckles and said, Friends, I have to mention that what with all this mirth and fun, it's sort of hard to hear, but now I know the cause that these paraders hold so dear. Tight showers, the clown blurted, as he hid his head in wonder. He held up a camp shower, and the others all got under. Or at least they tried to get beneath, they strained but couldn't quite. There wasn't room for all of them, they pushed, but it was tight. White power, came the mad refrain, quite carefully pronounced. The clowns consulted once again, then a woman clown announced, I've got it. I'm embarrassed that it took so long to see, but what these marchers march for is a cause quite dear to me. Wife power, she exclaimed, and all the other clowns joined in. They shook their heads and laughed at how erroneous they'd been. The women clowns were hoisted up on shoulders of the others. Some pulled on wedding dresses, chanting, Here's to wives and mothers! The men in robes were sullen. They knew they'd been defeated. They yelled a few more times, and then they finally retreated. And when they'd gone, a kind policeman turned to all the clowns and offered them an escort through the center of the town. The day was bright and sunny, as most May days tend to be, in the hills of Appalachia, down in Knoxville, Tennessee. People joined the new parade. The crowd stretched out for miles. The clowns passed out more flowers and made everybody smile. And what would be the lesson of that shiny southern day? Can we understand the message that the clown sought to convey? Seems that when you're fighting hatred, hatred's not the thing to use. So here's to those who march on in their big red floppy shoes. 